Leaked documents show Facebook's role in hate speech in India. Um, so this will be about the Facebook whistleblower. The controversy surrounding the jarring information gleaned from documents recently revealed by the Facebook whistleblower has far-reaching consequences that extend well beyond the United States. Francis Hagen, the Facebook data scientist turned whistleblower, presented a wealth of internal documentation to the United States uh, Securities and Exchange Commission with the hope of changing the company's ways. The documents demonstrated Facebook's attempts to curb hate speech and misinformation not only failed in the United States, but that the con company also uh, uh, provided severely ineffective moderation in their Indian market. A report obtained uh, a report contained in the leaked documents entitled "An Indian Test User's Descent into a Sea of Polarizing Nationalistic Messages" chronicled the experience of a test user's account created in India. For the three weeks in which the test account was kept active, India was shocked by a militant attack in the disputed Kashmir region, which killed over forty Indian soldiers. The report describes the test account's newsfeed as, quote, a near constant barrage of polarizing nationalistic content, misinformation, and violence, and gore. The documents also showed that Facebook is plagued by increasing anti-Muslim propaganda spread by extreme Hindu groups. Wait, so how does this work? How are they, like, how they're responsible for hate, hate speech in India? Like, so there's so many different aspects to it. So one aspect is the issue that of how the algorithm can take you down a very nasty route, but that isn't exclusive to India, right? Um, there's been a lot of media coverage about how the recommended feature, um, if just the content that the algorithm is recommending to you without you actually going to seek everything out can very easily down lead you down the path of the Q people. I'm not going to say the real word because of the algorithm, but um, I think you guys all know what I'm talking about. The, the Q crazies. <laughs> so same issue happens in India. So with this attest account, one thing that they did, like I said, is they started an account in India and you don't actually go look for any likes. You just like the what is automatically recommended to you. And it will take you down a wormhole that gets increasingly more radical because Facebook has serious flaws in these forms of the algorithms. Another aspect in which they are responsible for hate speech in India is something we've talked a lot about before, which is the problem that Facebook has with aligning with the ruling party and picking their employees for the company at a senior level and their advisors from the ruling party, making it extremely less likely that um, you, they're just pulling from the powerful, right? So people from- That's, how, that's how our page got banned in India. Yes. As mm. a matter of fact, the previous, um, I, I can look it up in a second, but um, this woman who had a very senior position in Facebook um, was a supporter of the BJP and well known for that and accused of making anti-Muslim statements on her own personal Facebook herself. Is she I think still she's, working there? Um, mm -hmm. th this report by the AP made it um, sound like she's since left. Um, so can we get can we get access back to India back, please? Thank you very much, <laughs> guys. For pe for people who don't know what we're talking about, our, our Facebook page is the world's largest atheist page, right, with more than two million four hundred thousand followers. But three hundred thousand, at least three hundred thousand of that was from India, and the Indian government basically did, made uh, Facebook cut access. Like our page is completely locked in India. Like we just lost contact with three hundred thousand of our followers in India. Um, and they can't, unless they use a VPN, um, you know, they can't see our page and yeah. So, and also our website has, has been also blocked by a lot of ISPs in India as well. So again, this is amazing because like, this is the Indian government forcing Facebook to specifically like ban our page in India. So our page is not banned, which is and Facebook's acknowledgement that we didn't do anything wrong or because if we did something wrong, the page would be banned. But no, they just blocked us in India at the request of the government, which is 
probably the reason is all these people on Facebook, India working so closely with the BJP. But yeah, go on. Yeah, so that relationship with the BJP is really well documented. There's been huge exposés by Times Magazine and the Wall Street Journal about the influence of the BJP in India, including um, one thing that this really um, well-written and lengthy article by the AP talks about, oh yeah, here's a picture of Modi and Zuckerberg just to, this this is real. (laughs) What the hell? This is how close they are. I don't think Zuckerberg is consenting to this. Modi G is think, giving him a big old hug. <laughs> I think this is like an attack. This is like, yeah. I mean, I would ask Zuckerberg to blink twice, but I don't think he's capable of doing that. But anyways, go ahead. <laughs> um, so uh, th- th- this article also really details how there's been instances where Facebook is failing to act when they know something is wrong in specific cases that have to do with Hindu extremist organizations. So there's been a length, these documents revealed that there have been lengthy discussions within Facebook talking about how they should label the RSS a dangerous group, which would subject them to suspension and other sanctions from the website. For those who are not familiar, RSS is um, a a Hindu militant group that um, supports the ruling party. Um, They are like little fascists. Um, And so to this day, as of the reporting of this big AP article, um, they still have not, it it has not been revealed whether the company has um, marked any Hindu nationalist group designated them as dangerous. Um, they there's been many instances where BJP party leaders have said violent things about the Muslim community, and it prompted violence within hours. And it it took way too long for Facebook to remove that content that directly incited violence. That's another huge issue. But another thing that is very specific to Facebook is in regard to their language moderation. So a large part of the problem is that, yes, they do have language moderation in Hindi and Bengali. Well, one, India has, I don't even know how many languages. They have a ton of languages, but those are really big ones. Um, And um, they are failing to adequately staff those operations so that way too small of a percentage of the hateful content is actually being fact-checked the fact fact checking was a big one or um just reviewed and removed um if it is found to be hateful so they need to um really strengthen their non-english speaking services to help prevent some of this problem and they didn't even bring bengali into the language moderation or um you know non-english language moderation services or whatever until 2020 um so this is a huge huge weakness in their entire system because even if you build a whole system that theoretically works well it obviously doesn't work well in the united states but let's pretend that it did um the fact that they don't actually even have it to service the great diversity of indian languages is automatically going to exacerbate the problem it's a huge hole in their entire campaign and attempt to um prevent this hate speech which has been showed to lead to real world violence in india um what's also clear or at least from the reporting of the documents that were um reviewed by the associated press and a consortium of other journalistic agencies um because i haven't seen them myself i haven't uh seen them posted but um what i've read about it is they talk about how it's clear that to the very top of the organization there's an awareness that there is this problem but there's still um a consistent failure to act on the information that their employees have gone out and gathered and researched um they'll research it and not enough is being done to correct it or mitigate it and um it's led to 
blatant political favoritism and um a uh really a potentially unsafe environment for people doorknob head oh oh secular oh, yeah, yeah, saying yeah. susanna is crushing it that's cute <laughs> um well doorknob head oh doorknob. hey doorknob. atheist republic cape town is here this is a convenient reminder hey, hey dean um dean who is one of the consulate uh leaders for our consulate in south africa cape town um started his own atheist republic channel to celebrate and talk about um the issues that affect atheists in the african continent who are vastly underrepresented in um atheist media um he he created a whole channel to profile this and to talk about this so guys go check out atheist republic cape town he he does cool stuff. And Secular Rarity is saying, uh, tagging Atheist Republic Cape Town and saying, I'm lo loving the videos, man. We have an endorsement right there. You guys got to go check it out. <laughs> yes. Thank you for all the work you do there. Hey, guys. If you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.